On September 29, 2016, layoffs were conducted in the Muscogee Creek Nation Division of Health as part of restructuring efforts led by the Office of Principal Chief James Floyd. Over 100 health employees were let go. The Muscogee Creek Nation National Council issued a statement on the layoffs on October 4, supporting the restructuring process. A petition to convene a court of impeachment for Chief Floyd was filed on October 7th by Muscogee Creek Nation citizen Brenda Golden, a former MCN employee who is also currently the legal counsel representing Barney Ingram in his lawsuit against the executive branch and MCN housing in Muscogee Creek Nation District Court. According to the petition, which is available on muscogeemedia.com, 3,431 signatures are needed by December 6 to validate the petition. The petition lists the reasons for the impeachment as treason, incompetence, and abuse of power. A citizen-led meeting regarding these layoffs at Muscogee Creek Nation Division of Health was held October 8 at the Mound Building in Oak Mulgee. A number of documents were provided at the meeting, including a letter dated January 30, 2015 from former MCN controller James Pratt to then-Principal Chief George Tiger and Assistant Controller Patricia Killian. In the letter, Pratt addresses areas of concern with Muscogee Creek Nation finances. As of press time, Muscogee Media has been unable to verify the authenticity of the letter and will be providing coverage on the issue once information regarding the letter is received from involved parties. And now happy to have in the studio with us the former district court judge for 25 years here at the Muscogee Creek Nation, the Honorable Patrick Moore. Thanks for being with us today, sir. You're welcome. So we're here today to talk with you about the impeachment process at Muscogee Creek Nation. Obviously wanted to bring you in because you, in fact, were district court judge. Uh, the only time an impeachment process reached that level uh, to where it does go to the court system. So as we said, many impeachment processes over time at the Muscogee Creek Nation, no one ever removed as a result. But can you talk to us a little bit about the process itself? Okay, the process is once a petition has a sufficient amount of signatures and is turned in within the time frame that's specified in the statutes, then the National Council and the Election Board along with the district judge, will get together and have a meeting whereby they verify each and every signature and address and citizenship of persons who have signed the petition. If they get past that particular meeting, then the National Council, who's present for the count, will declare they're going to have an impeachment pro impeachment impeachment proceeding. At that time, the National Council will appoint seven members of the National Council who are selected by lot to be on the impeachment committee initially. That impeachment committee will then hire with the authority of the Council an impeachment prosecutor which would be some lawyer. They will then go to work on, on what's in the petition to determine if, in fact, it meets muster with what's in the law. The National Council has specified exactly what you must be charged with in order for the petition to be valid. And there's a great list of those things. Normally, uh, as I recall, a treason uh, is one of the main things, and then, of course, any crimes and felonies, and then what they call high misdemeanors, and those are listed in the statute books as possible things that a person could be impeached upon. When they get through that hurdle, if they decide that they need to go before the full National Council for an impeachment trial, the judge that's in charge of it is going to be either the Chief Justice or one of the Supreme Court Justices, depending upon who's being impeached. Now, they can impeach any person who's subject to appointment and confirmation by the National Council. But a person that is not elected is probably going to have a vice 
judge of the Supreme Court preside. And of course, the trial is done before the National Council. In the case of the elected officials, the principal chief, second chief, they have to be convicted by a three-fourths majority of the National Council. It doesn't say about other people that work for the Creek Nation. Well, Supreme Court justices are included in that. It says they can be impeached with a simple majority. What happens when it does reach the final level? Say someone was removed and, and you get to that point. Then where does the nation go about having a successor? Well, in the first place, since you're dealing at this stage of the game with a principal chief, if the principal chief is impeached, he's removed from office immediately. And the second chief is sworn in at that meeting. If there's not a second chief, and there's some other time frame problems with the Constitution on six months before an election, etc., but they have to have an election. And for an interim period, the Speaker of the House of Representatives would be the administrative head, but without the authority to spend money or what have you, he just is going to be the administrative head during a 30 or 60 day period within which they would have a new election. So the trial process is another thing we'd like to, to talk about and explain because now we've gotten past the signatures needed, they've been validated, you've gone through a process of vetting the accusations even, looking at the petition. Now we're at a point where it goes to a trial, as you said. Well, actually, after the a petition is verified, there's a little more to it than starting a trial immediately. The statutes require a special prosecutor to investigate, and then they have to specify each and every charge in accordance with what's in the book, the law. When they get past that point, then they can have a trial. And of course, both sides have the right to be at a trial. So the trial process, when it does start. It's just like a grand jury in the state of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. They may issue an indictment, but then it's up to a district attorney to file those charges in court and then they have a trial after everybody has their discovery. And in this case, the National Council is the jury. They're only the jury, that's correct. Now you've got a Supreme Court justice that's a judge. Both sides will have lawyers. National Council will have appointed a special prosecutor in this case. Whoever's, on the, whoever's being impeached has a right to hire a lawyer. You imagine this would take place in the district courtroom, or I'd admit it'd be in that chambers of the, of the mound. That'd be my guess. That's where we always held big cases. Does the district court have any involvement when it gets to that? Once it gets to the point of they've done the signatures and they've said that they've got enough signatures, both the council council has to vote on that, and they say they've got enough signatures, then is when the national councils will pick seven people by lot to be on an impeachment committee and they start their work. At that time, it's out of the district court's business. The next thing, next thing is they have to vote on whether they think the items of impeachment are legitimate or not. And if that's done, then it goes to the impeachment. Well, we'll see if we get to all those steps. All right. All right. Well, thank you for being with us today. We appreciate it. And, uh, all the clarification of uh, the process. Yeah, hard to clarify something that really has never happened before, you <laughs> see. Right. Yes, well, we'll just have to, uh, we'll, we're going to cover it here, and uh, we'll go step by step with the process. Thanks for dropping in with us today. Thank you. Good luck.